Well, Greymon Ace arrived early for us in the card game, and today I'm going to show you guys how to hand counter your opponents with surprise blocks that they won't see coming. Digimon fans, welcome back and today we'll be showcasing my brand new updated version of the WarGreymon deck along with the WarGreymon Ace here. Since we got the WarGreymon Ace card from BT13 as a box topper, I just had to come up with a build and include it to show you guys how cool it really is. The new Ace cards are known to be the so-called hand traps of the Digimon TCG, which we will be getting more down the road in future sets. I'll be showing and teaching you guys how the mechanic works later on in the combo segment, but first, let's begin with the deck profile as usual. Alright, starting with Digi-8 cards, we got 4 copies of the BT5 Coromon right here. Just though, again, the best Digi-8 card because it gives you the 1 attacking, 1 return, draw 1 as long as you have a Greymon attacking with it and draw power is really what you need for this deck so you can find more pieces and again continue to combo on which is very standard stuff honestly as most cases then moving into our rookies we play the four copies of the promo Agumon as per usual I just like the consistency this one delivers when it comes to giving you constantly your turn while this Digimon has Greymon in its name extra 2k you definitely need the power the power is going to help you swing over things and get super strong and you basically never will get defeated by battle in any way there is another I alternative substitute you guys can be playing for this particular Agumon which I'll talk about later on in the other card section as well but that's it for now and then continuing with our Agumons we definitely need the four copies of the BT12 one being the best new searcher of the entire archetype and deck now just because it on plays reveals the top four adding yourself a Greymon or Omnimon in its name and a Tamer with Tai Kamiya among them placing the rest of the bottom and then with its all turns inheritable extra 1000 DP for Greymon and Omnimon is always constant and it's just always going to be really really relevant making you again super strong lots of DP buff effects for sure when it comes to this deck to finish off for the rookies again Again, more Agumons. We've got the Agumon X Antibody, one of the secondary best Agumons simply because it has the X Digivolve for zero on top of Agumon on play or when Digivolving, letting you search top three, grabbing yourself a Greymon or Omnimon in its name and also one X Antibody option specifically to your hand and being able to find those pieces are going to help you, you know, supply for your combos once again, which we'll show you guys later on. That's it for our rookies. Now let's move into our level fours, four copies of the security plus one Greymon from starter deck one. Still again, a really, really strong and powerful card. I love to run in general. With its security plus one, you can do more damage. Dealing more damage helps you go for that big aggressive play and then helps you close games very, very quickly. And it's just, yeah, very relevant. That's the whole idea of the whole War Greymon deck overall, trying to do as much damage with as much DP as possible. Then as the other secondary Greymon I like to play here is the EX11. This one just also offers a simple inheritable of when attacking once a turn, you get to play one Tai Kamiya with a play cost three or less from your hand for free. You guys can switch up the ratios between the two Greymons right here based on your personal preferences. If you do want to play more ties, this is definitely the more value one as well. Otherwise, yeah, two is all I really need for now again, because I definitely like to focus more on the aggression side of things. Then moving in into our Greymon X Antibody stuff, at least the three copies of the Greymon X Antibody from BT9, just to give you that kind of protection that you need with its all turns, you know, taking what out the sources to prevent it from being bottom deck or deleted by any effects you guys can bump this up to four based on your personal preferences as well totally up to you guys then of course still definitely the at least one copy of the bt11 version one just because it can help you turbo digivolve so quickly get into your level five and then potentially even in your level six in the same turn with this particular guy is just way too good but of course it also has that all turns protection with the x antibody option underneath it so then you can bottom deck it to prevent it from being deleted by any effects or bottom decking as well in general so again definitely must have that's it for all of our level fours let's talk about our level fives and i still play the four copies of this Greymon right here from BT12. It's just really good because for Digivolving for three on top of any Greymon specifically, you can do the raid combo. And when you do a raid combo or all turns once per turn when attack target is switched, you get to play a red or black tamer with play cost four or less from your hand for free. Keep in mind that when target switch it includes like blocking or even your opponent switching the attack targets themselves without necessarily having to raid is what this card 
really comes into the better situations to give you that free tamer, which is again a lot of value for doing that. And then as well, it gives you the inheritable mainly so that your turn while this Digimon has Greymon or Omnion in its name, it gains piercing so you can swing over your opponent's stuff, deal damage at the same time. That's what you're trying to go for in most cases. And again, not to mention, this can potentially just Digivolve for one cost when you combo it with the BT11 Greymon X antibody as well. Then we got one copy of Altruist Mode, just another extra layer of protection when it comes to level 5 because when Digivolve for 0 on top of Metal Greymon, it all, itself is also treated as a Metal Greymon. And then when Digivolving, if you have Tamer, you can pop a 5k or less. Comes in nicely handy every now and then just to get rid of smaller things. But otherwise, like I mentioned, I like to play it for the protection effect in Hurtable, which does the exact same thing as the BT9 Greymon X as well. To round off our level 5s, 3 copies of the Metal Greymon X from BT9 as well. This is our main powerhouse, gives us the extra DP we need, gives us the security plus one, you know, and all that kind of cool stuff. Digivolving for zero on top of Metal Greymon, really important combo that we can actually utilize it alongside with our Metal Greymon as well, which I'll show you guys later. But yeah, again, just a very powerful card that you want to get into because it makes your stronger body really, really powerful. And this guy itself can even become like a pseudo boss Digimon in the early stages of the game. So you can make lots of checks, lots of damage with pretty decent amount of power as well. That's it for all of our level 5s. Let's talk about our level 6s. Now, I'm playing 3 copies of the BT12 War Greymon right here. I still just really like this card in general just because of its raiding capability. It has Wendage evolving, you know, gaining the reboot and extra 3000 DP until the end of the opponent's next turn. And then with its last third effect is that all turns when an attack target is switched, you get to unsuspend this guy as well. So a really good, nice, you know, overall package when it comes to aggression and control package that you can you know synergize together with your entire stack and combos really really good card overall and again it digivolves with three on top of like metal greymon specifically in its name too and yeah this is the main guy that you always want to be seeing as often as you can now for the juicy brand new edition of the deck we're playing two copies of the war greymon ace from starter deck 15 just so you guys know we don't have the full access to the entire starter deck 15 cards just yet we only have access to this particular ace card because it was like a box topper for bt13 in us for us in english but i just thought you know it'd be really cool just to showcase this guy and play with this guy and show you guys what it can do as well and talk about it just because we have it early and yeah i just can't wait for it to come out if you're excited for the new starter decks with war greymon and metal gurumon to come and want to see me cover a ton of content for it ranging from budget deck builds combos and full power versions of those decks then be sure to subscribe turn on that notification bell right now to stay tuned also give this video a like where you're at it and don't forget to join the evolve club if you want to see early deck lists too but anyways it is a hand counter ace card what does war on ace do this is the so-called hand trap now first and foremost it digivolves for three on top of a black level five it can hard play for six costs which is really cheap it also can Digivolve for 3 on top of a Greymon in its name for the cost of 3. Now for the hand counter blast Digivolve effect is that one of your opponent's Digimon can Digivolve into this Digimon card without paying the memory cost. Now this is only the specific window of when you can play counter cards to go into the blast Digivolve to Digivolve for 0. Now this guy is a blocker, so you can, you know, block immediately after your blast Digivolve. It has an all turns once return effect. When a card is removed from the security stack, you get to unsuspend this Digimon. And it's also you may effect, so you get to choose when you get to do it as well, which is really nice. So you can time things and sequence things a little bit more easier when it comes to it. And yeah, this is the hand trap. A huge surprise is when it comes to opponents. You can do clutch plays, turn the tables when they're about to go for a big play. And then you have this, bam, this thing comes out. You know, you can block immediately. And also if a security card is removed, you can re-stand it as well. So they can block again and whatnot and make multiple attacks alongside. This is the secondary war grade mod that you want to be seeing just because of how good it really is and how much cool clutch plays that it can make and giving the entire deck a whole new dynamic with control which is really really nice now the last thing is is the ace overflow minus four now when this card specifically would be removed from the battle area under a card to another area you have to lose four memories so that's a huge payout cost so definitely keep in mind when you're playing this card to play at very most pivotal decisions or play at the most you know game breaking situations to turn the tide of the game because because once you lose this card, you know, you do pay out a lot of it just because of how good it really is and how many things it does as well overall. So, yeah, 
just that's War Greymon Ace right here. Really nice, fantastic card. Love the new artwork and design. Super excited to see it again to come fully uh, real soon. So that's it for our regular War Greymons. Moving on, we still have War Greymon X Antibody. Just a really nice versatile card as well. Digivolving for one on top of War Greymon or four costs on top of any level five. All turns, when a card is removed from the opponent's security stat, you get to gain a memory. And it's not once per turn. So, you know, the more security attacks you get to rack up the more memory you get to gain back with this guy and just a really good again really powerful uh deletion type based effect with end of attack once returned if war green mono x antibody is in this digimon's digivolution cards delete one of your opponent's digimon with dp less than or equal to this digimon's dp so really good for removal really strong one of us is just really okay for now you know just because we have really good aggression and i kind of tend to like to stay on my bt12 war green Mon in most cases and play the control game and also be aggressive at the same time with that so this is a nice to have in some certain situations therefore you know i decreased it down to one that's it for level sixes back to level sevens of course we're still going to be playing the omnimon package the blitz omni alongside with the omnimon x antibody from bt10 as well you know both of them together are just really good help you swing to a game you know this one can you know take out security with the bt10 one you guys know what the whole idea with this alongside with the x antibody option overall so yeah it's just really st standard omnimon stuff right here that's it for all of our digimon let's talk about our tamers Three copies of Ty right here. Really crucial tamer of the deck because it gives you the blocker at the start of main phase or on play and extra 1000 DP until the end of the opponent's turn. Also, when you digivolve into Greymon, you get to spend him to gain that memory back as well. So, you know, really good value for what it does in general. You guys can even play four copies of it based on your own sort of ratios and preferences to synergize with the entire deck. But, you know, three is really a good amount overall just because of what it does right there. And again, I'm still running the two copies of the VT1 tie memory tamer security plus one again i like the extra damage with this particular deck so you know go for the aggro plays and games quickly but also have the great defense at the same time which we'll talk about more again in the combo segment and then continue with our last tamers two copies of cool boy cool boy is just so good searches you like potentially two hits and two costs gives you the memory back when you digivolve into x antibody and whatnot always always just a very good value card for sure in the entire deck so yeah Definitely at least a two of. That's it for all of our tamers. Let's talk about our options. Two copies of X Antibody. X Antibody is to help you to do your when attacking combo plays, you know, so that you can digivolve into X Antibody and whatnot. And yeah, always really nice to have for sure. And then one Hades Force, uh, just for one defensive capabilities. You guys don't necessarily have to play this card. This deck may not really require this particular card anyways, just because of how aggro and how decent the control is. But it's always just nice to have, just depending on certain matchups. Hades Force, you can just like blow up your opponent's board and get rid of a bunch of tamers, get rid of a bunch of whiteboards and whatnot, and then attack afterwards is just really good value. And potentially even being a five cost option is why it's really good too. And then last but not least, you know, for searching consistency, gaining memory, making more plays and comboing, really the standard staple, red memory boost, two copies right here, just a round off for the entire deck. That's it for the 50 card main deck. Now let's talk about all the other suggestions and other cards I can be including to spice it up even more. Since it is a War Greymon Tribal deck, there's a lot of different options, which I'll always talk about when it comes to playing other cards. If you guys want extra DP instead of draw power, this Coromon is great. Extra 1000 DP for during your turn. It does come up every now and then, depending on certain matchups. If you guys don't have access to the promo Agumon or arguably want to have a different type of Agumon, this Star Deck 7 Agumon is also just equally as just as good. It has the when attacking extra 2000 DP when you're attacking your player and really have great combos and synergies when it, when it comes to your raid and it's not once per turn as well so you can rack up even stronger dp if you ever need to overall just based on your personal preference if you want more searching this is a pretty nice agumon to include still as a one-off the bt5 one if you just want to run a little bit more rookies as well you know so they can potentially hit a greymon and grab yourself an omnimon mainly for that and then for other gray mons, definitely this one that lets you play a tie for free if you don't have one. Really good in the early stages of the game just because of its effect, you know, to splash out a tamer immediately very quickly is definitely what you want to go for when you're playing this card. And then with its all turns in herdable, extra 1k is also nice to have for sure. Otherwise, if you want DP and sort of prioritize DP and sort of like, you know, digivolving efficiency, this is also a really good one. The one from BT5 so you can gain a memory back and actually giving your top an extra 2000 DP too to make it even stronger. That's also good. Then if you want to play a little bit more control aspect, Metal Greymon X Antibody is actually very relevant in this current format in BT13, especially when it comes to, you know, facing off against Shine Grade, just because it gives you that extra layer protection of, you know, DP reduction prevention and D-Digivolve as well against certain black decks too. 
And then by doing that, you can also pop 6k or less if you have a Metal Greymon underneath. So it does cost one to Digivolve on top of Metal Greymon. And then it has a pretty good synergy when it comes to, you know, unsuspending during your opponent's turn with any reboot and all also with your War Greymon unsuspending effects overall during the opponent's turn as well. You get to trash your opponent's security. So yeah, really good control aspect. And again, really good, you know, counter matchup if you ever want to go for the control side of things. Otherwise, another War Greymon, the one from BT1, is always still a really good choice, even just as a one-off because it just gives you that extra security plus one for the turn you know when it swings in no options are allowed three cost is very memory efficient as well you can get into it very very quickly in this deck and potentially you know just otk your opponents if you want to go for that kind of play too just always a good one to have for sure and then again like i mentioned this is a wargreymon tribal that you can play some of the black wargreymon stuff inside here so of course we got black wargreymon black wargreymon x and gaiomon so you can juggle between on what you really want to prefer in terms of like the toolbox style it's just super fun and super cool being able to switch between gears with these guys and sort of like play the whole synergy black war gray itself is great for taking out tamers black war gray x is really good for more defensive and control and removal and then gaomon is also really good for aggressive attacks and aggression in general so you know gaomon and black war gray x only works really nicely with black war gray specifically so you know comes down to again to your whole top end sort of choices on how you want to juggle between overall and then last but not least, if you guys want uh, sort of more option kind of protection and extra DP, Yuya is actually a, a very decent tamer to have as well, other than just a security plus one tie. Comes down to personal preference on what you really like, so go for whichever you want overall. All right, that's it for all the cards I want to talk about. Now let's show you guys the combos and the how to play segment of this entire deck. Overall, this is a stack building deck, so in your opening hand, you know, seeing the level threes, fours, and then potentially your fives and your sixes and moving forward building towards your stack is really what you optimally want to be seeing that's what you want to go for you can't be too greedy with the specific pieces but especially when it comes to the x antibody stuff you might have to juggle around in between as you're building the stack and you can't really like just say oh i really want to go for the full stack but sometimes you are able to which is the whole reason why there's a whole lot of searchers in this deck and this is why we play a lot of those searchers and this is why you would have like red memory boost for example the agumon right here that searches the agumon x as well it's always even better value when you can digivolve your agumon x on top of your agumon so you can draw one more card cycle in that same turn and search at the same time you know that's always the more ideal way to go of course when you're building your stack and hatching your egg definitely digivolve into this agumon with the inheritable that's the one you really want to go for Think twice before you get into your Agumon X here. It does give you that extra layer of protection when you go towards your Greymon X line, which is kind of nice, but also utilizing the searching is a little bit more ideal. Same reason why you would play Cool Boy to continue to search and find your pieces. You know, eventually seeing your X antibody option is definitely something you like to see. Not necessarily though, but it does fulfill a pretty nice neat combo. Then did you evolve into the Greymon Security Plus One, which is generally what you would have. Otherwise, into this one's totally fine. You know, building in the stack and the raising, these are just inheritables nice to have. And then going into Greymon X and then so on and this is like when you want to you know be thinking about whether you need to push out to combo with your cool boy to draw more cards or not really based on your personal opinion but anyways once you're ready that's when you want to push it out you know digivolve into metal Greymon here specifically making sure you can retain your turn whether you start your memory at three or whether you gain enough memory back and whatnot you know finding your tie throughout the time is also really really good and this is when you can do a really big combo play now, of course, with the security plus one is very straightforward. You know, you just deal more damage in general, which is great for early game aggression. But otherwise, let's show you guys this also the Greymon combo from EX1 as well. So once you push this out, and if you do have X antibody, then great, you tuck it underneath. Now, what you want to do is use Metal Greymon to raid into your opponent's security and then use the raid again to basically redirect into your opponent's unsuspended Digimon with the highest DP. Now, once you do that, you resolve a bunch of effects first. Always make sure that you draw one with Koromon because there's some th cards that you might be able to play with it. And this is when you want to sort of use the Greymon from EX1 to play the tie for free. Now this tie instantly is going to give that extra 1k and blocker and until the end of, end of opponent's turn. Now the Metal Greymon raid is going to activate as well to set the last effect where all turns if something attack target switch, which it did fulfill. You come into this tie and get to play this out here. And then the final thing what you do is then you digivolve with X antibody into Metal Greymon X here. And Metal Greymon X will gain extra 3k, it will gain extra security plus one as well because it also has the X antibody option overall. So right here by swinging over that Digimon, your Metal Greymon X antibody is at least 11, 12 of Tai, and 13, 14. So 14, swing into your opponent's Digimon, swing over it, and then dealing like one security, two security, three securities in total, 
and that's basically how it works. Otherwise, if you have this other gray mod underneath, it's going to be dealing four damage in one shot, just like that. And then afterwards, your final follow up play is to go into War Greymon right here. War Greymon will gain the reboot. This is the new dynamics you get to get into. If this you don't see this War Greymon, if you ever had a level five that's sitting on the board and you can't, you know, go for the aggressive plays and whatnot, you can sit there and then eventually, potentially, that your opponents attack you, you can surprise them and even blast Digivolve into this War Greymon X Ace during their turn if you ever have a secondary stack of level 5. That's usually what I like to do. I like to have my primary stack as this War Greymon as that big full combo if you can pull it off. Obviously, you can't have all the stacks all the time, but sometimes, you know, this card itself is so strong, you know, it buys you a lot of time by itself. You can be building a secondary stack uh, somehow, you know, right here, let's just say you Digivolve into this, and then you Digivolve into this, and then you Digivolve into another one right here, and you can just sit with a, another level 5, and if your opponent tries to do something, try to, you know, interact and try to counter your board, this is when you can counter back at them with this particular guy and surprise them with your hand trap just like that. And then on the board, you have two copies of War Greymon right here, two different kinds that can control the board and sort of like play around and sort of you know, control even more and swing aggressive both at the same time and just win the game just like that, which is super fun. And I really, really like this whole new dynamic with it because you can just juggle between and that's usually how I go with the entire strategy. Now wrap up for the deck profile for today. If you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please give it a like. If you have any suggestions, recommendations or questions, be sure to share it with everyone in the comments down below. What other decks are you guys most excited for the BT13 meta? Once again, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned for more BT13 content. If you guys just can't wait and want to see early deck lists and first drafts, then once again, definitely join the Evolve Club. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you next video. And this is Evolve signing out.